I mean, I, I often hear the criticism of string, string theory is devoid of um, evidence. And um, really? so, Mr. String Theory, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've heard that too. Uh, <laughs> taking the taxi down to dinner, the taxi guy was all about string theory, no evidence, what are you guys doing, you know, rational science reason. You know, I just sort of cowered in the back and paid my bill and left. But, um, so, so what's the real, the real situation is the following. So we have a real issue on our hands, a theoretical issue, of putting gravity and quantum mechanics into one consistent theoretical structure. Einstein's general theory of relativity does a fantastic job for gravity, makes predictions, and they're confirmed to high accuracy. Same for quantum mechanics as applied to the small domain. The problem is you try to put these two theories together and each claims that the other is wrong. They shoot each other in the foot and it doesn't work. So, right there you see that you've got to make progress on making these theories harmonious because they both are at work in the universe and the universe makes sense, so the mathematics has to make sense. Now, we have finally, Einstein was in some sense looking for this theory, but he wasn't really thinking about it in quantum terms, but the unified theory is what he pursued for 30 years. So we have this unified theory in hand, and then the question is how do you know whether it's right or whether it's wrong? And now we come to the issue of, of predictions and evidence, and here's the thing. We can use the mathematics to make predictions. The predictions, unfortunately, are extraordinarily difficult for us to test. If we had a sufficiently large particle collider, then the collision of particles within the context of string theory would make a prediction that that collider could test. Now, how big would that collider need to be? Well, people have done estimates and it would probably need to be the size of the galaxy. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The cost of an accelerator goes like the square of its energy. And if you're talking about a collider of that size, it, it's yes. hard to get funding. You know? so, um, so that's what it all comes down to. But, but my point is a serious one. Yeah, I get if it. this theory was not able to make yeah. contact with reality, yes. you really think physicists would, 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 would spend time on it? I mean, we, you know, we most, I think, we go around once, and I don't want to waste my time on something that, that has no chance of ever making contact with reality, but um, it's hard. Now, in, in lieu of being able to build a collider the size of the galaxy, you try to find indirect tests, clever tests, that might somehow be extracted from the theory, and we had hoped one such test would be uh, confirmed at the Large Hadron Collider, which is a collection of particles that naturally come out of string theory. They're called supersymmetric particles. The name doesn't really matter. But these are particles that no one has ever seen. And the hope was that the Large Hadron Collider slam protons against protons. You'd produce these particles in the debris, and that would be a nice piece of circumstantial evidence in favor of the theory. The fact of the matter is those particles have not yet been produced. They may be produced shortly, which would be a triumph, circumstantial, but still a triumph for these ideas, or it could be that the machine is just not sufficiently energetic to produce mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that the theory doesn't make any predictions, it's that it's very hard to test a theory, and this will be true of any approach to put gravity and quantum mechanics together, because, yeah, I, I see you over there. I, I'm, just, I'm ignoring you, but I see you. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 you know. Uh, you know, it is going to be true of any approach to unify I mean, gravity I, and quantum I, I get that completely. But it, it, it's, it, it's one thing to say um, it is in, in principle meaningless because there is no test. Yes. But to say that it is testable, but not in practice, not, 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 not feasibly whether un, under existing... Yeah, and I think that's a, a, a fundamental distinction that gets lost. And I think it's a vital one. Well, yes. And it's, well, it's silly to lose that distinction. It's a perfect, perfectly good distinction. 